everybody. Um, thank you so much. Asalaamu Alaikum. <coughs> Actually, I have to confess to you guys what I've been going through for the last uh, three days, especially. Last one week, more the last three days. I've been going through an ordeal. Uh, the organizers of this, sh this show, TEDx, has approached me last year to be part of the TED. And uh, they keep writing to me. Um, they keep sending me a lot of guidelines. I have a problem. Uh, I can't prepare a speech and talk according to the structured notes. I'm very bad at it. And uh, they said it's 18 minutes long. The counter already started running. The last time I stood in front of this of a counter like that was when I won the Oscar. And uh, the speech I made there, they said it's one of the unforgettable speech in that evening. But I bet that's not going to happen here. Um, oh, it's so much pressure. Uh, I've been trying to, I've been trying to run away from this counter for the last three days. And uh, then, I then I tried to sort of not come today, uh, saying that I'm very busy. Uh, actually, I was very busy. Uh, I am very busy because this is the time where we send a lot of films to Cannes. I have two of my films running to be showcased at Cannes, so there is a certain deadline that I have to, I have to adhere to. But because I said yes to them one year before, I have to live up to the com that, that commitment. Then, uh, then again they said, it's, it's according to the guideline, you know, that you have to be here. I said, okay, 16 is the talk. Can I come on 15? They said, no. According to the guideline, you have to be here two days before. So, my immediate nightmare at this moment is Ted. I don't know who these guys are. <laughs> I have never met them. So always they push these this guidelines in front of me and I started thinking they are like this credit card honchos, you know. <laughs> they, only, they only exist on phone. You call them, they are on phone, you tell them the problem, they say they will call you back. You ask them, do you have any number where I can reach them? No. They will call you back. So it's like every time I attempt to do something, they say it's a guideline. So according to the guideline, I'm supposed to speak 18 minutes. I think TEDx means extension. I think they will extend it. <laughs> so, so here I am, don't know what to talk. Here I am, wanting to show you something. Probably that will spark something. Um, today in the morning sessions, we have seen, you know, a lot of emotion on the stage whether it was Dr. Abdullah or uh, Dr. Adra or the Bionics guys, we have seen a lot of emotion running in our minds. So I am somebody who works with those emotions. I am someone who sort of manipulate human emotions for the benefit of human beings. So filmmaking is a very, very ironical um, area of art where whole lot of human emotions are manipulated so that other humans can enjoy. So it's very funny. So we all sit in one room in, in, in darkness where caste, creed, religion, color, nothing matters. We laugh at one joke. We laugh at, cry at one emotion. There is a unity. It brings people together. It brings culture together. I'm very proud of the fact that I work in films, first and foremost, but I never thought I will work in films. As, as a beginner, I studied physics. I wanted to be a physicist. I had this huge emotion running in me, thinking that I am going to invent a superconductive material and I am going to win a Nobel Prize for India. That, don't laugh at it, that was my true invention. But, But I got an Oscar instead. It's not a mean feat, but <clears throat> there's a whole, whole lot of things happened behind it. It's just that um, 
once I finished my uh, graduation in physics, I wanted to join my master's in physics. Uh, our education system is very, very, um, I don't know what this, somebody just, just, just told me that. It's, it's very, very you know, peculiar, it's very hard to understand. Uh, 15 seats for a master's in physics and 150 students passing out. And my father was a staunch believer in principle. He said, no donation, so my superconductive material hanging in the air now. <laughs> so I didn't know what to do. I had this uh, first class degree in, uh, in physics, so I was just roaming around. So I said, I'll join for law. So I joined for law. Then, uh, a year into the law, a couple of my friends said, they saw an advertisement in the newspaper. They said, you know, there is a course in Film and Television Institute of India, Pune, where you can study sound engineering. So the engineering word sort of interested me. So I thought, also it's an extension of physics, so I would do something to do with physics. So I went to Film Institute thinking that I'm going to study physics. I born in a small, in a, in a very, very remote village in Kerala. Why I say this, um, you know, quite often it comes across as like a pompous statement, so I don't want it to sound like that. There was no electricity there until my mm, age of 17. The nearest school was six kilometers away, so we had to obviously walk to the school. So I've never seen films before, not major classic, classics, uh, classical work. So I went to Film Institute like a novice, doesn't know anything about filmmaking, but I spent one week there. I didn't get in for the first time, I failed. Because I went there, prepared like an IIS exam, you know, you give structured notes, that's why I refused to read notes. Um, went there and I failed in the first exam. So I came back. But that failure did one good thing, that I discovered cinema. And I found out that, that cinema is my call. I want to do cinema from now onwards. So I came back to my law school, one year, I just watched films, wherever I could go. I sort of, uh, you know, uh, re reinitiated the film societies in, the, in, in my college, in my other college, my friend's college, everywhere I went, and I watched one film every day, and I prepared sort of myself, and I got into the film school the following year. Then, I would say, mm, in the guidelines, I keep saying that, let there be a story. So that's again another thing that's running in my mind. Where is the story? <laughs> this is no story. Okay, the story is this. I went to film school from a small village. I met a whole lot of people. India is a very, very diverse country. Lots of people from different parts of, parts of India. So I went and met all of them who doesn't speak my language. I studied in, in Malayalam medium, which is my regional language. So I had to go there and speak to all of them in English. I think in Malayalam. And I translate it. My computer is not so fast. <laughs> and I speak in English. So, in every translation, what is lost is original. So, there is a generation loss in everything that I do. So, I thought well, the first thing that I have to do is to overcome this. If you ask me what was your struggle, that was my first struggle. To overcome where I am coming from, to overcome so that I can communicate with the rest of the world. That was my first struggle. I studied one year with a timetable to myself. Every challenge was to myself, not to anybody else. I prepared a timesheet for me. I woke up, the library opens at 8 o'clock. 8 to 8.45, I used to go to the library. 10 minutes breakfast, go to the class at 9, 9 to 1, classes, 1 o'clock hit the lunch, finish the lunch fast, come back to the library, go back to the classes at 2, come back to the library at 5, 6 o'clock there is a screening. Monday to, mon Monday to Sunday, morning, evening, afternoon, I used to read different kind of books, different kind of periodicals. Every day I kept myself a kind of a timetable. And after a year, I thought, I'm done. Now I can talk to people, I overcome, overcame my fear. And I studied cinema three years. I used to have cinema for breakfast, cinema for lunch, cinema for dinner, and we used to spread cinema and sleep. <laughs> Came back to Bombay. 
now Mumbai and uh, to, to the Hindi film industry. When I came out, I had two dreams. One, I always thought why Indian films are looked down upon compared to the rest of the cinemas in the world. Why a European cinema or a Hollywood film is conceived or appreciated far better than Indian cinema. I, I, I realized there's a way the sound is done in those movies. So I wanted to change that. And second was to create a sound library for Indian cinema. We never had a sound library. We, you know, if, if you have to source sound, uh, libraries, uh, sound, uh, you know, we had to either go to Hollywood library or a BBC library or a sound ideas, any of those ones. So I came to Mumbai with these two dreams in my mind. Nobody needed them. So basically, you got educated, you have a structured knowledge about cinema, and you think you are going to create, change the world with your new cinema, but the industry doesn't need you. That was my second struggle. To create my need for the industry. An industry doesn't need me, but I needed the industry. So I began with the concept of recording cinema live in Mumbai, way back in 95, when there, was, there wasn't even necessary specialized microphones available. I used to collect microphones from my friend's place and you know, put it in a bag, take a taxi and go to shoot, you know, like a porter. 14 years later, with the same concept, I was standing on a podium like this in the in Cinema Audio Society of America, where we won the Cinema Audio Society of America's award, which is the biggest honor for any sound man in the world. Only 500 people that got that honor uh, in the world, we won for Slumdog. <laughs> that, thank you. That teaches me one thing. If nobody needed you, then you are going to make some difference. If nobody needed you, then it is upon you to create the need. And someone asked me, oh Rasul, you, you know, you got overnight success. I said, yes, just that one night had 14 years long, you know. So that's the story. According to the guideline, I have done everything. <laughs> so, so I'm going to show you something. I would rather tell you what, what I do so that you know, uh, you get a grasp of what I do. So I'm going to show you one sequence from this film, the much talked about Jamal's film. I'm going to show you a sequence, just enjoy the sequence.
every morning. Okay. How many sounds you heard? So many of them. Okay, I can just break it down. The kind of all the sounds that we heard in the sequence, I can just break it down into six. One is a spoken dialogue. Second is the ambience sound of that place. Third is the sound effects of the place, of whatever has been created. Fourth, you probably might have heard some so the boys running and the policemen hitting the lathi and all this, all these sounds. They are called the foley sounds. And the fifth one is the music. And often in Bollywood, you hear one more sound, is the songs separate. So, now this, all these six elements are created with numerous, numerous number of layers so that you don't perceive the whole thing as one experience. That's for the job. While we were, we were, I was working on this movie, I was working with one idea. That one big idea was, how are you listening? Um, when this film came to me, it was, you know, shooting live sound in Mumbai, on the streets of Mumbai. It was, I had done an Amir Khan film before that. I thought I have mastered the art of, you know, recording cinema live in Mumbai streets. So this film came into me. I said, okay, it's cool. First day I went to the shoot, there were seven cameras shooting. Traditionally, in filmmaking, we use one camera. We take a long shot, then we have to take a close up, we go take the camera closer, change the lens, we do one by one. We deconstruct one scene into number of shots and we shoot. Here they have done, because we, it involved kids, untrained actors, they were using seven cameras and shooting live. Most often, Danny would come to come and say, tell me how he would like to hear the sound in that particular sequences. So, which means I have only one chance. So, if there is something wrong in a take, we would reshoot the whole scene again. As a principle, you know, when we are doing live sound, we use the minimum number of microphones so that the noise captured is, is less. I must have used more than, you know, at, at sequences I have used more than 25 microphones. So, first day of the shooting, I realized that whatever I have learned till now is defunct. There is no use of this. I have to unschool, I have to de-school myself, everything that I have learned. I stopped recording the film professionally. I thought I was making the biggest mistake of my life. Then the solace was that, you know, somebody, nobody will watch this film. Someone will watch in some festival. My reputation is intact, you know. I decided to record the soundscape of Mumbai. And within the soundscape, the film was happening. Let me tell you an example. You are in a room like this, in a party. All of you are talking. Your friend is standing in that corner and she says, hi. To a point, you can just concentrate and you can listen to them. If I keep a microphone here, I will not be able to hear that. If you are walking on the road, there is a lot of traffic, you are talking to a friend, you are walking, you can still hear everything that he is saying. But if I keep a microphone, the microphone will hear everything. The microphone does not have the intelligence to hear. So, only one aspect I tried in this film was to understand how human brain is processing hearing. I used technology to arrive at it. I used multiple microphones, multi-track recording to arrive at how a human ear would hear something at that moment. I was, it, this film was competing against some of the biggest blockbusters, biggest films of made in that year, Wally, -E, Batman Forever, all of it were 300, 400 million dollar films. This is a 12 million dollar movie. And I think we won. I often ask myself, well, how did I win an Oscar? I think that was because I was working on one idea. And that idea was strong. So I want to tell you, my youngsters who are sitting here, have an idea. The execution of an idea can be bad, can be you know, amateur, but idea can be bad. 
So if you want to do something different, find one idea. Okay, let me come back to this. Uh, I'm going to play you various elements of, of the sequence so that I can tell you how we arrived at what you heard as an experience. Um, I'm just going to play a little bit of everything. we recorded during the shooting of this movie of all this crowd and and uh, everybody running around creating a riot situation and I'm going to play you another element after watching the sequence what Rahman created This is what Rahman created. There's no music until until quite into the sequence. This is his interpretation of what the edit editorial film. This is his musical interpretation. There's no music into the film. quite unusual of Hindi cinema, you know, they can't look, listen to where the music is coming in and how it's coming in. much you got the sense of music, how piano is coming, drums are coming, other elements are coming, one by one it has been introduced. Now, you got a sense of various sounds, when the boy runs to the policeman, the policeman saying run away, run away, those are, those are the spoken dialogue. Now you see how these various elements, sound effects, music, dialogue, everything that has been part of the, of, of of that sequence being enacted there, being captured and has been used to recreate another reality. It has been used to create another emotional experience. I'm going to play what I played you first time again and in this time I'm going to run, speak through, speak through it so that I can explain you. So we need to establish the whole area the sounds of that place and we see, we see the kids because we use the sounds of water and your attention straight away goes to the kids. And the mother looks at it and you hear some sound and something going to happen and we give a clue and the voice goes down. how it comes up as if he's out of the water. Now every, pers every perspective, now 
is from the point of view of the kids. Because we change the sound. It's not natural sound. with electronic sounds, also used the piano, also used a lot of uh, acoustical instruments. But we picked and choose what is from that, that we can use it as advantage for, for the story of the movie. Like there were many, many sounds we have recorded, we put it together in such a way, we put one sound, we put another sound, we change the nature of sounds here, so that, you know, in an uneditorial sequence, it wouldn't have been, you know, the, the perspective of the boys. With the change of sound, we've been able to bring that perspective. Then we used music as an emotion, as you know, as moving the tempo of the sequences. And what we have done is actually coming up with another composition, which is completely different from a musical composition, where music has been used as another sound. So various other sounds we record, we multiply, we put together, so that it creates one emotional experience. That's what we do. That's what I said, you know, we manipulate emotions. Because this is something that when you watch a movie, we never realizes it. This is something that you experience. That's why sound is called a subconscious art. We are working inside your subconscious mind. If you do this, you're going to feel this way. If you do that, we're going to, we can make you feel in a particular way which is advantages to the storytelling of the movie. That's what we do with sound. There's a lot more to be talked about uh, how we do it, and you know what, there are various aspects and you know various things that I. If it, I wish this was like a half half day session. Um, I see I have already overrun so many. I think they have extended enough kindness to me. Uh, I just I'll just sign off uh, by saying one last thing. They call my industry dream merchants. I just want to tell you one thing. Dream is something that you don't see when you're sleeping. A dream is something that doesn't allow you to sleep. As long as you're clear with that, you've done the job. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to show you.